Today I'm going to show you the HomeAway Hospitality app Owner Dashboard. I am Tyanne Marsink and I am a vacation rental owner myself. So I am going to show you exactly what my HomeAway Hospitality Dashboard looks like and how I have my property set up for my guests. Then I'll also show you several tips about your guests so that you can see what they see and know if they're looking at the app or if they've even opened the invite that you've sent them. Um, the HomeAway Hospitality app I've been using for quite some time and even before HomeAway had it when it was called Glad to Have You and I love this app, I love the technology and my guests actually love it as well. I've had several guests ask me why don't other owners use this technology when they stay at their vacation rentals and so I'm going to show you exactly how I use it and how it benefits me and then some tips to help make it easier for you also. So we're going to take a look at my dashboard and we'll look at the at my property info and then I'm not going to show you my guest info. I'm going to obviously keep that private um, for my guests and we'll take a look at a home away test uh, properties and look at the test um, reservation so you can see on that side of what you can do. So I'm going to switch screens here and we're going to take a look. Okay, so here we are with uh, your regular owner's dashboard that you're used to. And you can see we have two properties that we're seeing, uh, the Reindeer Ridge Condo and Santa's Elf Lodgings. And so we're going to go over here on your left-hand uh, navigation, and we're going to go down to Hospitality. It's under the Reservation Manager section, and we're going to click on Hospitality. So that's going to now take us to our Hospitality dashboard. Now some people might have a screen in between that says, um, you know, advance to hospitality and you'll need to click on that green button to say yes, keep going there. Um, I just did it recently so it doesn't have that in between screen for me right now. Alright, so we bring up our activity. And this activity is like our little news feed of our guest. And we can take a look here. Uh, the little help tells us that we can see our guest interaction with the hospitality manager. So you can see everything your guests do with the hospitality manager, which is really cool. Now over here on the left, we have these little check boxes. We can look at the activity just for one property, or we can take a look at for both properties. See, they're both checked, so we can see the activity for both properties. I want to scroll down. We can see here that recently a guest was thanked. This was his reservation information. You can even hit view reservation and it'll take you to that info. And it tells you exactly when the activity happened. It was three days ago. You can see here that Dustin was also reminded about the trash during his stay. And he was reminded for his checkout and before that he was welcomed. Now there's a guest um, stay coming up and Mr. Ted Nick was invited with his follow-up because he has not accepted the invite and downloaded the app yet. So we're going to go back up here and underneath you know seeing which properties that you want to look at in the check boxes. So if I only want to look at one say I'm gonna I just want to see Santa's Elf Lodgings. I'm gonna uncheck the condo and it's gonna refresh down here and you can see we're only seen the one property, which is nice, especially if you have multiple properties. Now the other thing you can do is look at the automatic activity. This is what you want to see, and then if you don't want to see these things, then you uncheck it. Same with the guest activity. So when the system, the hospitality manager, invites a guest, it'll show up in your activity unless you uncheck it. Same with inviting the follow-up the guest welcome, the guest thanked, the guest reminded about, or the upcoming reservation. So if you don't want to see these, then you uncheck them. Same with the guest activity. Now let's say I only want to see the activity where the guest is using the app. So I'm going to uncheck all of these because I don't want to see them all. All I want to see is the guest using the app. So I'm going to leave that checked and this is going to start refreshing for me. There we go. And in this test account, you can see the guest was using the app, um, Josh Tester, first day that was 1022 to 1023. And then I, if I want to view the reservation and then how long ago that happened. 
Now, obviously, this because this is a test account, you know, things aren't, you know, tested and everything every day. So we don't have a lot of recent tests um, right here. Test the, the using the app. Okay, so that is your guest activity. Now the other thing I want to show you, come up here on your main navigation to my guest. And we're going to click on my guest and take a look at this. So it's loading here. And we can see here, we have several reservations. Now there's a stay that is ending tomorrow. Uh, the stay is Matthew, and these are his additional guests that he's invited to the stay. So what's really cool is you can you have your main guest, and then you can tell your guest to invite everybody else in the group. And you will get all the information for each of these. Now from here, we can edit reservation, edit the access code, and there's we can add a guest as well. Now edit access info is very important. This is the only place that you can add their access information that is secure. So this is where you would put your door codes. Anything that you don't want um, to be public knowledge, well, okay, so the other stuff's not public knowledge, but as far as seeing before the access time. So right here, the door code, this is the door code that we entered and instructions jiggle the handle if the door is stuck. So you wanna give them that little bit of extra information to get your door open. You can save changes or cancel. So your door codes go into edit access info. Remember, this is the only spot that it's available. And only these people on the reservation will see it. No one else will see it whatsoever. Your check-in information is comes, you know, it's not in the secure within access time. Now if we scroll down here, guests can see my rental parking, find my rental as well as driving directions. This is the secure information that only, only goes out to the guests when you grant it. The other parts of the hospitality are available pre-stay, so they can help them to plan their stay. So the check-in information bubble, that, that widget, helps them to plan their check-in information. This access info part is the stuff that um, you have to give very specific time frame. Now you can schedule the access or you can do it manually. Now the thing with here is if we're gonna look over here on the left and we can see that Matthew has this little smartphone icon. That means he has downloaded the app and he's accessing the hospitality manager. Other people in the group, these guests here, they have a little note icon. That means they have not accessed the hospitality app yet. So that's your little tip to know if they have accessed and downloaded the hospitality, hospitality manager or not. So if these were my guests, I would know these three people have not accessed the app yet. And Matthew has. Now if we go scroll down here, uh, Mr. Ted Nick is coming in shortly, uh, next week actually. And so we've clicked on him and he comes up. Here's Ted Nick. If we were to click on that, my email program would come up and I could email him. We can edit reservation. We can make sure he has access info. And he does not have access info. So we're going to put um, some info in here. And what I do for my guests is I put the same as the last four digits of your cell phone number. Do that, save changes. And content was successfully saved. Now if you notice here, we have um, a little icon, state needs attention. And it tells us here, one, check-in information is not provided on that property, so we will have to fix that. It also lets us know that the guest cannot see his access info for next week. Now, it depends upon how um, you set up your property, but you can schedule the access to be automatic within X amount of days, or you can do this manually if you'd like. Now, say we want to do this manually, all we have to do is go over here to allow, we click allow, and we click confirm that we want to do it. 
So that is um, the little tips about the dashboard um, under my guest and activity. Now I'm gonna switch over to my own property here. And we're gonna take a look at a my rental section. See, this is my rentals. This is where you would click to um, get here. And I have two properties, Canyon Retreat and Nature's Retreat. Now it automatically opens up to the rental instructions. And all of these boxes on top are the ones that I have content in. And they're the only ones that will show with the, um, in the app. So I have quite a few. I have a lot of information. But there's quite a few available content. And all this available content is not shown in the app. So you're not, you know, burdening your guests with tons of all, all these information blocks that are not related to your rental. Only the ones you fill out the info will show in there. So all of these, you know, the biking, electronics, elevator, I don't have an elevator, so I have no information in there. It's not going to show in the app for my guest, which is really nice. Um, one thing I do need to add um, for my one house is a fire pit, because I did add a fire pit. I need to update my information with that. So you can fill these out as you'd like, and I'll show you a few that I did. Um, I, I think the about the owner one is very uh, important. So I tell a little bit about uh, who I am, and really this is the same information I have on my listing. And that way it's all you know, across the board, people know about me, I have it on my personal website too. And it's just really short, just brief information. And the cool thing is too, is under all these widget blocks, I can either save to my one property by clicking here, or I can hit the arrow button, and I can save to both my properties at the same time. So that really, really helps with not having to go through and save and do all the information over and over again um, to all your properties, especially if you have multiple properties and you're entering the same information for all of them. Same thing with uh, the coffee maker. So the coffee maker, it's not just the thing that I have a coffee maker. The info for the app is information about the coffee maker while they're staying at your house. For instance, I have a curing machine and I you know, make sure they know I don't provide coffee filters, coffee or creamers, um, and the K-Cups as well. I want them to bring their own things. Now, some you know, previous guests will leave leftovers and people can check to see if there are those, but I don't guarantee anything. Now, I do, as a little welcome packet, have a, a little bag of K-Cups to start them off. That way, when they arrive, say they arrive late at night, uh, they don't have to worry about their cup of coffee first thing in the morning before they make it to the grocery store. Now, this is also a good area for troubleshooting tips. And, you know, Keurig does have a little bit of a history of troubleshooting, so I made sure I put those in here. You know, troubleshooting tips for the Keurig. Step one, don't cry. Step two, lift up the water reservoir and drop it back into place. And I go through all the different steps to help them so that they don't get frustrated and not have their coffee. Step eight, if you've done all this and the Keurig machine's still not working, then please call me. So I'm not leaving them hanging as well. And uh, this has worked great. I've had absolutely no issues uh, with my sh machine, thankfully. And my guests are happy. They've not had any issues because they know the expectations. Um, they know what they can do. And just knowing what they can do helps make their stay better. All right, so let's go, let's do the fishing one. I'll go to the fishing. and. This one here, I have information about especially uh, licensing and fishing guides. Uh, we're a big fishing destination. And I let people know that they will need a fishing license and where they can get one. You can go online or you can go to the local Walmart to get one. And then the trout license also where you can get that because a trout license is in addition to a fishing license. And you know, not everybody knows that. I certainly did not know about it until my brother told me. And then fishing guides. I have a lot of people ask about fishing guides, so I provide that information as well. Now you can also do web links. And so I have the link to the Missouri Department 
of um, conservation so people can just click on the link and go there to get their uh, fishing license. And then I don't have any phone numbers in here and I really should uh, move uh, the fishing guide down here. So we're gonna do it right now. Copy the phone number um, and we're going to say custom title. And this is Buster Loving's Just say Buster Lovings. All right, add that and the phone number. We're going to paste there, and I want to save this to both my houses. So I'm going to click the down arrow, save to all rentals, and confirm that I'm saving to all the rentals. Please wait. It's saving. It's working. And there we go. Success. Content was successfully saved. Awesome. So that is under uh, rental instructions. So you can see current content. There is available content towards the bottom. And say you don't want to you know, search or you don't want to scroll through looking for a certain uh, piece of content. We can do a little search right here. So I want to talk about the pool. And there you can see it just automatically starts bringing things up and I can click on the pool. And I can see it's under current content. I've already filled it out. Um, and available content is, um, there is not a widget called pool, obviously, because I've already used it. So you can use the uh, search to help with that. Now, pre-arrival. These are info blocks you really, really need to fill out. And these are the minimum. Check-in. You do not want to put any sensitive information in this area because people will see, your guests see this before their stay. So you let them know information about check-in that they'll need to know before their stay. And this is not, you know, the security code area. Remember, that is the area I showed you earlier under edit access info for that particular guest. So anyway, I let my folks know that the check-in time is any time after four on your arrival date. And I let them know about early arrivals because, you know, we get that question all the time, like I'm sure you do. And I let them know how to use my keyless entry. I made a super short video to show them. And then there's also text instructions. Uh, that way they can just read it and they can read exactly how to use the Schlage lock. And then I let them know that they will be charged if they don't get it locked correctly. And then I let them know what it, how they can check to make sure they have it locked correctly. And they're welcome to call or text me to check to make sure that the system shows that it's locked. So making this uh, little video and having the instructions here in the app has cut down dramatically on one, the number of um, calls and frustrations from guests who have trouble working the lock. The lock is super, super easy to use, but you know, when you're on vacation, you get vacation brain and you forget some things. So this has helped my guests wonderfully. All right, so driving directions. This one is in, on the, in under the secure area. So the driving directions will not show until you've given the secure access to the guest, but you still need to fill it out. Um, it's really important because people do want to know how to get to your place, obviously. Uh, parking instructions. Now, parking you want to give them instructions about parking. Uh, this is the pre-arrival. So I let them know about, there's only two parking spots. Don't park in the grass. If you're bringing a trailer or RV, you cannot park in the neighborhood and you need to make res um, arrangements with the storage areas. And then here's the storage area information. So parking instructions, people like to know what about that. And then, of course, you know, fill out your rules on pets, smoking policy, and then what to pack and what's provided. And then I am not generally a fly to destination, uh, but I'm starting to. So, you know, something like this, I'll probably be filling out very shortly. What to pack. Um, this is one that I definitely do. And as you can see, it's very short. I tell my guests, don't forget your personal items. Uh, beach towels and food. 
that's about it because I do provide pretty much everything else. And then the other one, what's provided, this one a lot of people think, oh, they can just look back on my listing at what's provided. Well, in the app, you can go even into even more detail. So here I have um, what they can expect at the house so they don't have to worry about parking, to, about packing them. But then I also let them know if it's a disposable item that I've started them with and they run out during their stay, that they need to go ahead and pick up more things. The other thing that I put in here is at the bottom, actually, especially in the kitchen here, if any of the above items are not at the house, please let me know so I can get them replaced. It sets up that expectation of, yes, it should be there, but then if it's not there, it gives me that chance to remedy the situation versus um, them thinking that I'm an owner who just you know doesn't care or was just leaving it out or anything like that. So I have the entire list here. Um, I start with the bedrooms, bathrooms, so that they know what to expect. Uh, the kitchen, I let them know all the different stuff that I provide in the kitchen. And then from there, I also include the living areas, what they can expect, as well as the baby items and the laundry. You know, I go highly detailed so that they can look through this. And I tell my guests uh, when they book to make sure they look at this as well so that they know what to expect. All right. And then let's see. Let's go to local suggestions. Help your guests live like a local. Now, what's really cool is under each of these, um, we can I can add my uh, personal recommendations. So under owner recommended, I added um, some of my favorite restaurants. And here, um, if they don't have a website, you don't have to put that in, but you know, put as much information as you can. And then you have your recommendation notes. And I let them know, you know, it may be a little hole in the wall in downtown Hollister, but the food is fabulous. So that's really good. And you save your changes, the changes that you do. And there's tons of local suggestions that you can add in there as well. Okay, thank you message. This is important. This is the thank you message. You have total control over what it says. There's a standard thank you message that HomeAway puts in there for you, but you can edit it. Same with the welcome message. So just put out a little bit. I always put uh, my phone number. I put my website. I ask them um, to leave me a review that I'm appreciative of their time to leave a review. And I kind of guide them on what they want them to say. Uh, that way they're not just drawing a blank and say, hey, it was great or eh, it could be better or something like that. I want them to talk specifically about things. So I say, you know, was it the comfortable beds? Was it the location? Was it the space? Was it the specific amenities that I provided in the kitchen? Uh, you know, I try to hit on those things. And then if they're unable to leave five stars, you know, please let me know because I want to let, um, I want to make things right so that future guests can have a great stay. And I've had really great success about this. And then the welcome message, like I said, this is the other one that you can edit. And I welcome them. You know, welcome to the vacation home, my place. I truly care about their stay. Please make sure they look through the app and I encourage them to invite others to the app as well. Now, the rental information. This one is also important. Okay, so the whole app is important, guys. Sorry. Okay, so rental information, the rental color. This is the color not of your property. I know some people, I, it might be obvious to some people um, that it's not the rental color of your property, but I've had um, people ask me, oh, well, my house is white and it doesn't give the option of a white color. What, well, what do I do? Well, <laughs> this is the color to help you differentiate between your properties. So if you can see over here, I have Canyon Retreat as blue. So all that's blue. Nature's Retreat is green. So when I go down here, all my widget blocks, when I'm working in Nature's Retreat, they're green. When I work in Canyon Retreat, they're green. When, or they're blue, sorry. When I go to my guest, my Canyon Retreat guests are marked with blue color. My Nature's Retreat guests are marked with green color. And that way you can easily tell which guests belong to which property. 
And so you have several different color here, colors here to choose from. I chose blue for Canyon Retreat. Now scheduled access, this is a cool feature. You remember your access gives your guests instructions and door codes, the address of the rental driving directions, and parking instructions. And you can do this manually for each guest. I have chosen to enable my scheduled access. And I chose 14 days before arrival. Now you can choose to have that done three days before arrival or even 30 days before arrival. It just depends on when you decide you want to do it. I chose 14 days before arrival. And so 14 days before, my guests get a notification saying access info is available. I also tell my guests, hey, two weeks before arrival, directions and security code will show up in the app. And then they know to go check it. And then I also send an email and I, you know, I put it on my calendar to send them an email saying, hey, by the way, directions and security code are available on the app. If you have not downloaded the app yet, please be sure to um, do that. And if you lost your invite email, you know, let me know and I'll resend it to you. So that is the rental info that's important. Then um, we can come over here to settings. Owner notifications and guest notifications. Okay, these people get a little bit confused about. The owner notifications, these are the notifications that are sent to you as an owner and what they send to you about. I have only a few enabled. I don't want an email saying that the guest was invited. I don't want an email saying the guest was invited as a follow-up email because they didn't download the app the first time. So I've disabled those. What I do want to see is when my guest gets the welcome email and when they get the thank you email. And then I want to see when the guest invites another guest. Those are the three that I keep on. The other ones I have um, disabled. I don't want emails about that. And um, the upcoming reservation, I kept that one too. So these are emails to me from the Home Away Hospitality to let me know what's going on with the hospitality manager. Now the guest notifications. These are the notifications that are sent to the guests that you can turn on and off. There's only two that you can turn on and off, which is the thank you and the welcome. Now if you have a separate thank you notification or a separate welcome notification that you send to your guests that you don't want the app to, to send to, you can, down, you can disable it right here. That's where you disable notifications to the guest, and you only have those two options. The invite you cannot disable, um, the follow-up to the invite you cannot disable as well. All right, cool. So the other thing is add-ons. This is really cool. Now there's two add-ons they have right now in the hospitality manager. Uh, one is the door locks, and they've partnered with two different places, Be Home 24-7 and Resort Lock. Um, personally, I use Schlage Link with the Nexia Bridge, so I don't, don't do that one. Now guest services, when I click on this, this is really cool. And um, I've had owners ask me about, you know, hey, can I print all the information in the hospitality app? And the answer is yes, you can. So you go to your guest services and you enable this and it's free. And what it does is you can provide the printed information of everything within your hospitality manager. So if you want to print that out and leave it in a book form in your um, rental, if you want to snail mail it to a guest, you know, you can do things like that. So this is where you'd print it. You go here, um, click the arrow for the settings or print now, or we can remove the option. So we're going to hit print now and I'll show you what it looks like. And we can just include a portion of the items if we wanted to but we're just going to leave them all checked and we're going to hit print. And you can see here, you can save it as a PDF. Now I'm on a MacBook, so it gives me this option of uh, going to my printer to print, or I can save it as a PDF and you can actually uh, email the PDF of everything to your guests if you'd like, which is really cool. So right now I am going to hit uh, cancel because I'm not going to print it right now. And you know, it just it shows a picture of your property, it shows the title of your property, 
as well as the address. So it's a really cool feature, especially if you want to save it as a PDF uh, and email to your guests if they don't have the um, smartphone, because some people you know, don't have that access. But if they do have that access, you know, encourage them to use this on their phone so that uh, when they're out, even just sitting in a restaurant, and they want to look through the information about their about your house, then you can. They can. So that is um, the information. But I'm going to show you one more cool thing. Um, a lot of owners, you know, you want to know how do you see what your guest sees. And it used to be there is this little preview icon, a little magnifying glass over here under uh, my guest. That's where I'm at now. Is my guest. And you could go to a reservation and you could click this little uh, magnifying glass over here and a little pop-up would come up and you could see exactly what the guests would see. Well, that uh, feature is not, is not there at the, this time. So the work around that is to add yourself to a reservation. Now the guests will not see that you're added to the reservation, but you'll get to see everything as that guest. Also a uh, note that if you are to make a test reservation as an owner and you put in your owner email address, the system recognizes it as the owner email address and will not send you any emails or notifications because that's your owner email address. So don't make a test reservation with your owner email and expect emails and notifications. The system recognizes it, it's not gonna happen the best thing to do is to add yourself to a current reservation. Now the other thing about creating a test reservation is the system will see um, that it, one, it's a reservation, it's, it'll act as a true reservation, it doesn't know that it's a test, and it will, um, one, if you have to cancel it later, it's not gonna like that. Two, it's gonna block those dates. And for me, I wanna leave all my dates open for guests. So the best thing to do is add yourself to an existing reservation. So we have Ted Nick here. And what I do is just add a guest. And you can put in uh, first name, last name, and the email address. And you can um, then follow along with your guest and see the emails that come. And you can see the app as um, they see it as well. So that is the last tip that I want to give you guys. So there is my quick walkthrough of the HomeAway Hospitality Owners Dashboard. I hope it helped a lot of questions you might have had. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know. I will talk to you guys later.